me repair my time machine. Hello and welcome guys, I'm Dingsy and you're watching Avebat TV with some gameplay footage of Professor Y Chemistry 1. It's pretty cool, kind of an educational game that came out last week on Steam, I think. And I want to play a little bit of it. Let's check quickly the settings. No webcam. I guess there is, as you saw, it's that augmented reality version with some cards and set of edge cards and then webcam. Mm, well, I don't have edge cards, but we'll go with the standard one. There is even a version for for a teacher. I wonder what that is gonna be. But yeah, runs for 60 FPS, scaling of the objects. Narration volume, music volume, all we need to see. Pretty, pretty cool, it's a 2D game. Is it even a game? Let's go and check out the second of those. Professor Y! Reminds me of those... Welcome! Oh. Today we will examine the conduction of electricity through solutions. Some very electrifying experiments are waiting for us. We will check what solutions conduct electricity. We will use a battery as a source of electricity. We will construct an electrical circuit composed of a bulb, two graphite electrodes, and our solutions. Let's start. Okay then. That's Let's see what happens when we dip electrodes in distilled water. Distilled water. What's gonna happen? Distilled water, water which thanks to distillation does not contain mineral salts or most other substances which contaminate it, as you can see, does not conduct electricity. It is used everywhere a very high purity of water is required. Car batteries or ions. Mm hmm Or in your iron. Now, instead of distilled water, I will use tap water. Tap water should be just fine, yeah? Water which flows out of our tap, as well as so-called mineral water, contains substances which dissolved in it, including salts. And unlike distilled water, it conducts electricity. Okay, what's next? Now it is time for alkaline solutions. Let's start with sodium hydroxide solution. Yeah then. A sodium hydroxide solution conducts electricity. Substances which exhibit such properties are called electrolytes. Well, sulfuric acid. Let's move on to acids. Let's connect hydrochloric acid solution to our simple Ooh. electricity circuit. Yes, hydrochloric acid is an acid that you have in your stomach. This solution needs to be an electrolyte. Can you see a shining bulb? Now let's try with sulfuric acid solution. What's going on? Some bugs? There we go. You have just proved that aqueous solutions of acid conduct electricity. We can therefore include them in the group of electrolytes. Particles of acids undergo dissociation because of water. Acids are therefore, according to Mr. Arrhenius' theory, such substances which dissociate in water solutions into cations H+, and anions of acid radical. Oh, story. Okay, so we what? We still have fun with salt solutions. We shall start with a sodium chloride solution. That should do it. Yep. Bulb has lit again, so it is also an electrolyte solution. 0.9% sodium chloride solution is called physiological liquid, saline. It is used in medicine for irrigation and supplementing deficiency of electrolytes, and also as a liquid to wash eyes or wounds. Mm -hmm. Or keep fallen teeth in if you want to implant them back. The same will happen with the solution of sulfate magnesium. What magnesium? That should be clear. Yep. Hydrated magnesium sulfate is commonly known as bitter salt or English salt. It was in fact mined in the United Kingdom, Epsom, and sold <laughs> as a medicine with laxative properties. <laughs> you might have noticed that after the graphite electrodes are immersed in salt solutions, we observe the illumination of the light bulbs in our test kit. Salts which dissolve in water conduct electricity as a result of the electrolytic dissociation they undergo. Cool, cool, cool. I think we did as this. As you can see, only distilled water does not conduct electricity. 
The remaining solutions had the properties of electrolytes. And what did we get? Five points. Yes. No, 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 no. I don't want to repeat. I guess main menu it is. Okay. We've done sublimation, uh, iodine, what conducts electricity, metals in water. Hmm, this sounds interesting. Let's go with that one. Wow. In this experiment, we'll check which of the metals can be put into the bath. Do you think that a metal can be dangerous? Let's check it. Nitrium. In water. Or was it... What we'll need is lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, yeah, potassium. cesium, a big crystallizer with water, phenothalin, and metal pliers. Watch out, because those metals are really active, and because of that, stored in potassium a special, special way. Yeah, they're in The metals in I've listed belong to the so-called active metals, which displace hydrogen from water in normal conditions. These are metals from the first group of the periodic table. Activity of the alkali increases with the growth of the atom's radius. Therefore, mm -hmm. metals which find themselves at the bottom of the periodic table have the greatest reactivity. They react more rapidly, and as a result of these reactions, a big amount of energy is created. Such reactions are called exothermic. What's more, as a result of such rapid reactions, a hydroxide of a given metal is created. But remember that this is not the best method of producing hydroxides. Ho oh ho! Let us check our theory. Isn't cesium Crystal radioactive? Add a little bit of phenothalin, which will serve as an indicator. You remember it, don't you? Where should I add it? In the water? I guess. Now, Master, you can choose a metal, which you should throw into the water. Remember to use pliers, and be careful! Yeah, this is gonna... Okay, get the pliers. And drop it. In the water. I expect... yeah. Exothermal <laughs> reaction. Pretty cool. Well, the water's gone. What about cesium? Okay, I want to throw that one. Why don't you try another method? What? An awful any seal inside? That's not how it works, dear student. Try once again. I guess I should fucking pick another metal then. God damn it. It doesn't let me do whatever. Lithium. Hmm. That should be... I don't know, not that strong. He says and it's totally wrong. No, it's the same. No, it was... Oh. And by saying that I need to use pliers to aim it to get this? No. What's metal? Sodium. Meh. They're all the same. Okay, this was strong. Well, use the metal we should throw into the water. I don't get it. That's not how it works, dear student. Try once again. You know what? I'll give you another chance. You know what? What? Thrown all the metals in the water. What now? But I'm gonna pick that. Rubidium. Uh oh. <laughs> that exploded. What about cesium? There we go. Yeah. It was expected.
Those experiments are really explosive. Yep. That was it, just dropping. Yeah, we knew what's gonna happen. It's not that easy to get your hands on cesium, though. Is it? Main menu, what else? I got oxygen and other gases. We should go with that. How to obtain oxygen? Yeah, fuck yeah, let's go with that. Sultan. Oxygen is indispensable for us people to carry out the breathing process, which provides us with the energy needed for life. It is used as one of the components of gas mixtures in oxygen tanks used by divers and mountaineers. Can we produce oxygen ourselves? Yes, of course. Let's try to carry out a chemical decomposition of potassium permanganate. Oh yeah, that one. Or that one. I guess this is the cheapest one to do. In this experiment, we will use a stand with a test tube and bung, potassium permanganate, burner, glass vessel with a tube, a set of pipes, and a torch. Pour several crystals of potassium permanganate into the test tube. The test tube is in here. I'm just gonna do that. Just a smidgen. Okay. Need a little now, water. We will build the set to run this experiment. To do that, join the glass vessel and the stand with the test tube. Don't you think you should do it a different way? No. Oh, there we Add go. Add pipes to the set. What? Add pipes to the set? Well... This is super strange. And there's the burner at the bottom here. But do we need to add the pipes? No idea. The table is so small. There we go. Now add burner. Now the time has come to heat the potassium permanganate. To do that, use the gas burner. You should heat the test tube in the flames of the burner, causing the potassium permanganate to decompose. As you can see, the gas that is emitted is gathered in the test tube filled with water, which is placed in the vessel. If you've already carried out the experiment, do all the gases sustain burning, you probably already know in what way we will identify the gas product of the reaction. To do that, place the glowing torch in the test tube with gas. But do it quickly so that the gas will not escape. And we can see if it's still burning. Yep. The torch is really burning! This proves that the product of thermal decomposition of potassium permanganate is oxygen. Or it is a colorless and odorless gas that dissolves poorly in water, which is why we could have gathered it in this experiment from above the water. As you can see, it sustains burning. No oh, shit. Cool, cool, cool. Well, let's do one more. I made a mistake here? What? What kind of mistake did we make? Salts. Oh yeah. Professor's hand in fire. Hmm. Powerful flames. Yeah, let's go with that. Ah, so cool. Oh god, where is he? With the hoverboard. Welcome! Did you know that chemistry is full of colors? Yep. Many salts color the flames of a burner. Oh. During this series of experiments, you can take a closer look at colorful chemistry. See ya. In this experiment, we will need a burner and salts in alcoholic solution, sodium nitrate, barium nitrate, lithium nitrate, Ooh. copper 2 chloride, potassium nitrate, and rubidium nitrate. There's no time to waste. Grab the first salt and check what flame colors it gives. Let's go with this one. Yes, yes, we've already made green flames, but we didn't use barium salt for that. Damn. What is interesting is that barium compounds absorb X-ray and gamma radiation very well, 
Really? That is why they're used as a radiation cover component. Cool. I didn't know. Potassium in the metallic form is very soft and can be sliced with a knife just like cheese. Additionally, it is a very reactive metal. Mm -hmm. Something you will find out about in our next experiments. That's why it's called in poly... Whatever that was. Fine. Ho ho ho! You've probably already seen such color of flames, haven't you? If not, then take a look at the color of the flames under boiling potatoes, when the water boils over. We salt potatoes, and salt is sodium chloride. It is sodium that gives the yellow color of the flames. I've never seen that. I guess I don't boil them that much. Salts are used in medicine to treat mental disorders. However, the exact mechanism of lithium ions activity is unknown. Perhaps cool. you'll be able to solve this riddle. That's why they're used in <laughs> in medicine. You will not find rubidium in a metallic form in a shop. It is very expensive and reactive. But don't you worry, we will use it soon. <laughs> ho ho ho! Copper salts often give different shades of blue. And this is why, among others, snails have blue blood, and not red, as we do. But this is a story for our biology lessons. Congratulations! Chemistry also has much more colors. If you want to check it, then go to the next experiments. Hmm. Let's check it then. Shall we? No mistakes. What is the next one? Chemical gardens. What? I'm interested now. Uh, what the hell was that? I couldn't start it? I guess I need to complete something, so it's not linear progression. Hmm. So oh, it's linear progression, or is it? What does it mean, one out of five? We made so much mistakes. Hey, I've done with five out of five. Oh yeah, there we go. But not much. A mistake in the world, but yeah. <sighs> Pretty cool game, guys. I'm Dingsy, and this was our Bat TV with the gameplay footage. So rate the video, follow the channel, and I'll see you next game. Thanks for watching.